What is going on guys? So here is the scoop. I came out to this beautiful spot to fish a couple days ago. Just doing a little simple reef fishing. Just a beautiful, beautiful area. And I started catching a bunch of little reef fish called wrasse. And while I was fishing, I saw this huge lua swim right into this little pocket. And then, while I was catching these wrasse, I had a little one on, and suddenly another big fish came over and grabbed the little wrasse and tore them up pretty good. It wasn't something with huge teeth, because teeth, he didn't tear them up that badly, but I still had a big fish on come up and eat the reef fish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a, little, a small line down with a bobber, with a little piece of squid, and I'm gonna try to catch some little reef fish. And then I brought my big fishing rod with 30 pound test, and I'm gonna put a little reef fish on a big circle hook, throw them out there, and hopefully get a fish on the reef fish. What I've got in here is uh, the heads of a squid. And I just pinch off a piece of tentacle, and then I just thread it on like a worm. And I found that's been working really well. That one. It's a little one. Oh, and I think it's a, yep, it's a wrasse, and it's a baby one. <laughs> Perfect bait size. There we go, guys. Does that not look like an epic Ulua bait? Got a great big sinker on here. Let's cast this out. While the main line's out there, I'm just gonna keep casting for reef fish. Ah, missed him. Got one. Oh shoot, the snag. There we go. All right, guys, it's one of those, um, uh, I call them saltwater bluegill. I can't remember what their real name is. Looks like a saltwater bluegill, doesn't it? There we go. Oh, <laughs> almost hit the camera. These fish are actually good to eat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set them in a tide pool. He's kind of on the smallish side. I'd rather get some bigger, but I'm gonna set them in a tide pool just in case. Look at, there's a big eel right there. A great big mora eel. Look at it. That was crazy. Just came right up into this pool. Guys, I just had a bite right here. We're gonna check our wrasse. I don't feel very much weight. Yep, the wrasse is gone. Wrasse is gone. Wheel. All right, guys, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use this little uh, this little bluegill here for bait. I almost feel like I'm sturgeon fishing again. I'm just gonna cut a steak off this thing. There we go, nice little steak of whatever that fish is. Just wing it out there. Guys, I just saw in this little tide pool a nice size eel. You guys see that? That's crazy. Right, I'm gonna cut a piece of this fish off. Lower it right down to him. Let's see if he bites it. Oh, he's right there. He ate it, he ate it, he's got it. Oh, he stole it, he stole it off the hook. I have to get a bigger hook. Let, let, let's watch this. All right now, don't try this at home, kids. There he has it, he has it. He's got it. I'm gonna set the hook. Oh, shoot! Oh, he snapped the line. His teeth, he has too big a teeth. You know what, wait, wait, wait. I, th I think I have a spool of line in my backpack. Oh, yeah, 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 I have some 30 pound test. 
Guys, let's get this eel. We're gonna catch and cook an eel. Guys, these are strong. What? Oh, it just came loose. The hook. Oh, look, he just bent out the hook. Look at that, guys. He just bent out the hook like it was nothing. And that took like three seconds. Well, guys, my eel got away. My wrasse got bitten off. Here's me. I go back home, probably eat something, drink something, and then figure out what we want to do next. Guys, before we go back down to the beach, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. I've actually been listening to Audible way before I became a YouTuber. I've listened to one book four times in a row. I love it so much. I'll tell you about that in a second. But if you go to audible.com slash ace videos, you can sign up 30 days for free. What do you get with an Audible membership? You get three audiobooks per month. They have upped their game from when I first started. Right now, when you get an Audible membership, Membership. You get one audiobook a month, and now you get two Audible Originals, which are audiobooks that you can only find on Audible. You can't find these anywhere else. You get a free trial. Guys, it literally costs you nothing to try this. And if you're wondering, where do I start? I have a book for you. I love The Rise of Theodore Roosevelt by Edmund Morris. I've literally listened to this audiobook. I'm, I'm on four times. I haven't gotten quite through the fourth time yet, but I listen to this about once a year. It's such an inspiring book. Theodore Roosevelt is my favorite present. So if you need somewhere to start, definitely check that out. As I said, audible.com slash ace videos or ace videos to 500 500. Start listening today. Let's get back fishing. Guys, there is a baby whale and a bunch of stingrays hanging out just right up, just like a hundred yards from shore. No better place to enjoy creation than Hawaii. All right, guys, here's a new plan. I So I've hooked up the sinker here, as you can see, but I've attached it on really light line. Yeah, it's eight pound test line. And I've been trying different ways of it tying on the sinker so it'll detach. So then I can reel in the fish that bites the bait. And the sinker's not becoming detached. And so the eels have time to sit down there, chew on the line and chew through my leader. All right, cast back out there. I'm just gonna sit here and hold it. I'm not gonna put it in a rod holder and put a bell on it and all that. So uh, that way I don't miss a bite. Guys, I got something. I got something. <laughs> got something. It's an eel for sure. I can feel it. Oh, it's a oh, it's a big eel. It's a big eel. Guys, look at this thing. This is like too big to keep, I think. Oh, big nasty sucker. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That is a big, mean, nasty eel. Oh, he got off. He got off. There he goes. I think he's gone. Look, we got a big wave coming. Ooh. 
guys, that was crazy. That was like too big to keep. Like I wanted like a medium or a small size one. He bit off the line when he's in this pool and then that wave came and he shot out of here. This was the pool where that one swam up earlier, swam up into a hunting, hunting. So I better get off this. We've moved to a different spot here, kind of out of the wind and waves. The waves were just too big. It was too difficult to fish there. And uh, we got one more piece of bait. Let's give it one more shot. The hard part is when it's rough, that's like the best time to fish, but it's not the most comfortable time to fish. Guys, I got something. Got something good too. <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. Is this another eel? What is it? Are we, are we fishing in Eel City? It's another eel. It's a big one. Oh, it's a big nasty one. I swear. I swear. You know what? Here we go, guys. Here we go. What's <laughs> that Are you kidding me? Look at this nasty big morning eel. Look at that. I mean, this is. This better be. So, what we're going to do is, I'm going to keep this one. Oh man, it's it's a little bit bigger than I wanted to keep, but we're gonna try eating part of it. And whatever we don't eat, we'll use for bait. He's still on the hook. We're gonna take this big rock, we're just gonna knock this dude out. Even though this thing is uh, long dead, we're still gonna handle him with extreme caution. You know how snakes can still bite you after they're dead? I wouldn't surprise me if these eels are the same way. All right, I'm cut the head off here. It is, but I've been, I knocked it out so many times. I did not want this guy coming back to life. So I hit him like 10 times with a rock. Oh my, this is hard to cut through. I have a, I have a super sharp knife here. Woo, finally got the head off there. I'm gonna let that, uh, We'll throw that out for the other eels to eat. All right, so we got this part here. I'm just gonna gut it like I do a fish. All right, so here are all the guts. Guys, even the guts on this thing are hard to pull out. Good grief. I right, see, it's like a lining. Ugh. Ugh, there we go. It's like the blubber, uh, the air sac. All right guys, here we go. We got eel. It feels kind of rough. feels like an octopus, quite frankly. The meat does. It feels exactly like an octopus. And look, the head's still moving. That's kind of freaking me out. That head scares me. All right guys, we have our eel gutted. We don't have enough light. I would love to actually cook it out here right on the rocks, but we don't have enough light for that. So we're gonna take this back to the condo and let's cook it up. All right, guys, so it is the next day. Funny story, last night I come back to our, our family condo with the eel. My mom says, what do you have there? And I said, fresh eel. And she said, no, get that out of this condo. She is disgusted, she is reviled, she can't believe that I am eating an eel. So, good news is we have a uh, an outdoor barbecue at our at our condo so i'm gonna be using the outdoor barbecue and then i wanted to uh i was gonna film last night but it was dark out and i thought i want to show like the whole process what to do here uh in case it's good and you guys want to try it so i'm gonna wear gloves for this because this is tough to clean we kept it on ice all night all right so we have our eel here and what we're gonna do, I don't know if I mentioned this, we've never eaten one of these before, but I do know this, these make great fishing bait. In fact, guys will use a whole eel for the giant trevally, for Ulua, they'll put a whole eel on a hook. So what we're gonna do is, since we don't know how this is gonna taste, we're gonna cut it and use a sample part of it to eat, and then we're gonna cut up the rest for bait. Man, the skin is thick too. Okay, there we go, there we go. There we go. Gosh, this is hard to skin though. <laughs> We've got uh, half skinned, half not skinned. Take this big knife. There. And then I'm gonna just cut this up into chunks. 
You know what? It seems bony to me. As I'm cutting this up, it seems reminiscent of that flounder that we tried. All right, here we go. We have chunks of eel that we're trying to eat, and then we have eel for bait. We'll put that in a Ziploc bag. So the way we're gonna cook these is uh, put them in like a foil boat. We're gonna add lots of butter, salt, and I was reading online, some people use Old Bay on their eel. In fact, it was a Bobby Flay res eel recipe. And so I've got some, I actually brought Old Bay with me, put some Old Bay on this. Also in the Bobby Flay recipe that we saw, he used Cajun seasoning, which I thought was funny. That's my favorite one. We're just gonna let that all cook. And it's in the butter there. We will add this to the grill. Let it cook for 10 or 12 minutes, I think. All right, guys, and now we'll wait while we're waiting for the eel to cook. We're gonna do a little giveaway. We're gonna give away another one of these necklaces that I wear. I buy these on Hawaii um, when I come. And uh, great necklace, It's la they last me forever, and I put them, I, I wear them a lot, and they don't come apart. And a lot of these, like, these tourist necklaces, they come apart really easily. These do not. Um, to be entered into the giveaway, all you guys have to do is share this video with someone somewhere and then leave a comment below and I will pick somebody, I just close my eyes, I pick somebody randomly from the comment section. So uh, make sure you share this video and leave a comment below me entered into the giveaway. All right, let's check this here, y'all. Let's check this, y'all. Ooh, I see steam. This is done. It looks, it looks exactly like a fish, quite frankly. It smells good. It doesn't have a particularly unique smell to it. It smells mostly like Cajun seasoning. See, it looks a lot like fish to me. Take this piece out, like so. Bring this piece out. All right, guys, Let's here see. we go. It seems rather rubbery at this point. What do you think? It does seem rubbery. I want to make sure I don't have any bones in mine. Just gonna try a little bite to start with. It feels like octopus. Yeah, it does. That's what I was thinking. It reminds me exactly of octopus, quite frankly. Cheers. Cheers. I'm saying, kind of weird. Tastes oh, like we kind of a slightly weird Cajun flavor. Here we go, look at this. Uh, uh, I think that was mostly skin, because look, you've got, check this out. So I, when, let me go to, let me go to this one. Watch. Watch this when I cut it here. Watch this, if I go across there with that sharp knife, but see how it separates and then underneath that, I think we might have just eaten the skin. Oh. So underneath that, that but looks- I, I did skin it, but there was like a layer. Oh, oh is that, okay, yeah, like a layer of fat oh, but I see, or something. you're just getting yeah. pure meat right Yeah, there. now there's, the yeah, meat. let's do that. My initial thought when I yeah. bit into it, I was like, mm, eh. yeah. I mean, it tastes like an eel, what you'd expect it. Come on, man, I'm gonna try this. All right. Cheers again. Same texture. Yeah. It's like chewy like an octopus. If I were hungry enough, <laughs> if I'm hungry, but if I were hungry and didn't have an alternative, I'd chow down on it, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like, well, that was a good experiment. I don't think I'm interested. I'd like to see how they work for bait. We have, I've saved one for bait. There you go. I'd like to do that. But as far as finishing eating this bad boy, I, just from the texture itself, I'm not interested in that. It, mm. it reminds me a little bit of uh, like a fat on a pork chop or something. Uh -huh. it's yeah, just... it's like the fat slash grizzle on a pork yeah. chop. That's a great way to describe yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for watching. We try things so you don't have to. <laughs> That's right. In the case of the frogs, the frogs were not. Eel is no go. Yeah. Let's go catch some more fish. <laughs> Let's go catch some more fish. Yeah.